We're going to begin by doing a lamprey dissection today. And we're going to start by going over the anatomical landmarks. So this would be the anterior aspect of the lamprey. And this is going to be the posterior aspect towards the tail. Now the back part of the lamprey is going to be the dorsal aspect. And then the belly part of the lamprey is going to be the ventral aspect. You can see that the lamprey is a jawless fish. It has a circular opening here and a circular muscle that actually goes around here. It doesn't have a hinge. It doesn't open and close like that. It just basically squeezes. It goes up to the side of a fish, which is its prey, and squeezes it and clamps onto the side. You can also see within the buccal cavity, you can see a lot of very sharp teeth very what we call horny teeth. And these also latch onto the side of the fish and drill a hole in the side of it. Eventually the lamprey sucks the blood out of the fish. That's its nutrients and leaves the dead fish to, to basically sink to the bottom. Now if we take a look at the sides here we can see this opacity right here. This is going to be an eye. And again the preservative has uh, denatured some of the proteins and that's why it's cloudy. Here's another eye over here. If we go dorsally again, right between the eyes, or almost right between the eyes, we see a tiny little hole, a tiny little opening right here, midline. And that is going to be the external nostril. That actually leads to a part of the uh, brain called the olfactory bulb and that is where smelling takes place. Now if we come over to the side, we can see, and I'm going to kind of bend this a little bit, you can see various openings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven openings, and you can see I can actually put my probe in there. These are external gill slits, and that is where the water actually enters the lamprey for oxygenation. Now, smaller yet, just underneath the eye, you can see some, you can actually feel this with your finger, or you can see it if you sort of stretch out the skin a little bit, you'll see some small bumps or ridges, look like little tiny pimples, and you can also see them right above the eye right here. Those are going to be part of the lateral line system, and that's what the fish actually uses to detect vibration in the water. And this lateral line system, some scientists feel that that's actually related to our tympanic membrane, which is used for detecting vibrations in the air. Now if we go on a little bit further, we can see what's beginning to form here is going to be the dorsal fin. So the lamprey only has a single fin all the way down its back, which is most noticeable here, which we're going to call the anterior dorsal fin. And this is going to be the posterior dorsal fin right here anterior because it's more headward and posterior because it's more tailward. It's a single fin down its back and because of that the lamprey is going to sort of snake through the water. It's not very graceful like a perch or a salmon which has paired fins coming off of it which allow it better balance and better maneuverability. The lamprey doesn't have that. It's a very primitive fish. Now at the very very posterior end we can see the caudal fin, which is used for propulsion to push the lamprey forward. Where these two fins, the anterior dorsal fin and the posterior dorsal fin, are used mainly to keep the lamprey upright so it doesn't tip over in the water sideways one way or the other. And that is, we've got one more thing I want to go over here, which I forgot to go over earlier. This is our mouth again. We see the looks like little fuzz all around the mouth. And that is the buccal papillae, sometimes called the sensory papillae. And that's actually used you know, to sense touch, especially when the lamprey uh, attaches to the fish. Those are the buccal papillae. Now, what we need to do next is actually bisect this fish in half. So in order to do that we're going to take a scalpel 
and we're always going to cut away from ourselves. And what I'm just going to take the scalpel, and I'm not going to do it on this lamp, right? But you're just going to take it and put it midline. Push it all the way in. Push it, take it, take a good uh, grip. Push it straight in all the way until the mat. And then you simply want to very slowly move forward and cut midline. Try to cut right through the external nostril. Try to go right midline all the way down. And then once you do that, turn the lamprey around. And again, you want to cut away from your hand. Cut away from your hand. Again, put your scalpel in it where you left off and continue midline, bisecting or splitting the dorsal fin all the way down, all the way down, all the way down until you get to the end. I also wanted to go over one more thing here which I forgot earlier and that is this is the posterior dorsal fin. If we just go ventral to it, you can see over here there's an opening. And this opening has it's basically got two openings. There's one here more anterior, that's going to be the anus. And the more posterior opening, just right back here, that is going to be the cloaca. Now the cloaca is a, basically it's a combined opening for the urinary tract and the reproductive system. And that's where the eggs or the sperm, uh, the different reproductive fluids will come out. Uh, and also the nitrogenous waste, the metabolic waste. And then again, just anterior to that, we have our anus. I'm now going to go to the actual bisected lamprey. There's one half, and here's the other half. And I'm going to start by taking a look at the headward area right here, the anterior aspect. Again, we can see the buccal cavity right here. We can see some of the horned teeth. And if we take a look right here, we can see the tongue. There's the tongue right there. That flap of tissue is the tongue. And again, we can see one of the horned teeth right on the tongue. Now, if we follow the digestive tract, if we follow it right here, the digestive cavity, this is going to be our pharynx right here. This is going to be the pharynx and maybe I'll go in there with a slightly larger probe. This will be our pharynx. And the pharynx is actually going to divide into an anterior art, into a uh, dorsal branch, which is going to come up here, and a ventral branch, because it's more bellyward, the ventral branch right here. And that ventral branch is going to become our respiratory tube. And that respiratory tube is going to go into this whole area right here. And we can see the gills. If you can see those, they're fluffy. Take a look at that. You can see a lot of gill filaments there, very fluffy looking. Those are all the gills. Lots of surface area there. If we take a look at this side, we can see the pharynx even a little more clearly right here. Here's the pharynx. Here is the dorsal branch, which is going to give rise to the esophagus. And I'm putting my probe right into that esophagus right there. Eventually that esophagus is going to give rise to the intestine, which you can see right there, just dorsal to the, this big green uh, organ right here called the liver. And you can see how the intestine sort of dives ventrally. And we can see just on the other side, here if we got the liver on this side, you can see all of this area right here. This is all going to be gonad, either testes or ovary, depending upon the sex of this lamprey. Now the intestine is going to stay right here. It's going to move all the way down. We can see a bit of the intestine right there. You can also see it, if I move this a little bit, you can also see the intestine right here. There it is. And it's going to end right here in the anus, right there. Now if we take a look at the ventral branch right here, the ventral branch gives rise to the respiratory tube. And we can see one of the internal gill slits right there. And again, if I was to put my probe through that internal gill slit, eventually I would come out 
one of the external gill slits. And we'll, let's see if we can actually do that. We're getting close right around there, external gill slits. Again, we can see all this very uh, kind of fluffy material. You can see if you actually put a magnifying glass over top of it, you'll be able to see how how uh, all the gill filaments and how much surface area is actually there. If we take a look posterior to the gills, these are all the gills in through here, we're going to see this structure right here. See, I'll try to lift it up a little bit. There it is. And you can also see it over here. A very well-defined muscular structure. That is going to be the heart. That's going to be the heart. And I've actually, you can see right here, I've got a little hole there. And that's actually one of the aortas right there. I've actually got my probe in the aorta. And that aorta is going to uh, go towards the anterior. It's going to go towards all the gills, all that oxygenated blood. Now, we see a very noticeable structure right here. This is going to be the notochord in which this animal is actually named after. It belongs to the phylum chordata, or chordate. And this notochord is what chordates are actually named after. This is used for flexible support. And just dorsal to the notochord, this is the spinal cord, which in a very immature lamprey would have been the dorsal hollow nerve cord. But this is our spinal cord here. And if I follow it anterior, I come to the brain right here. This is going to be the brain right there. Now, anterior to the brain, I can see that external nostril that I was talking about earlier right here. That's the external nostril, and that external nostril actually uh, leads to an olfactory bulb or an olfactory sac. It's sort of black in color. You can see it right there. That's where it is. We can also see some, some tougher, harder tissue right here. We see little plates of cartilage that also gives this lamprey support. So the cartilage along with that notochord is what gives this lamprey its flexible support. Let's take a look, see if there's any other structures that I would like you to know. Uh, one more structure right here. You can see all this tissue right here. This is all muscle, very tough muscle. So these lampreys are strong little creatures. So we see a lot of muscle. You can see all that muscle over here also. All this, both colors. There's some muscle here. Here's some more muscle right there. A lot of muscle on this fish. And that's going to be it for the lamprey dissection.